Cassie, also known as Knitacass. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk all about my knitting, my learning, sometimes some epic failures of uh, knitting attempts, my triumphs, and a little bit about my busy farm life with my four children, and um, some mental health occasionally. So I'm going to put probably over here a list of places where you can find me. I invite you to grab your favorite cup and your favorite beverage and come join me. This is one of my cups that I got for a graduation present from my sister. It says earned and then it has RN in the middle with the medical symbol and I've got my Pepsi here to enjoy. So let's get right into it. So first off for First off, for finished objects, we have the owl in the room. So this is supposed to be Hedwig from Harry Potter. And I'm, I talked a little bit about it before it was finished, but now it is finished. And it was a birthday present for my son who turned seven. And it was really easy to knit, even though um, if you skim through the pattern, it looks kind of complicated. It's a pattern by Tannis Knits. It's in this nice big book, I'll try to put a picture in, uh, called, uh, I think it's like Knitting Magic or Harry Potter Knitting Magic. And it has a bunch of patterns that are inspired by Harry Potter. So this is the owl. It was supposed to be knit in a different type of yarn. I'm using a thicker yarn. I'm using, um, I didn't write it down, but pretty, pretty thick, um, the thickest yarn I've ever used and had to go up a couple of needle sizes to um, not hurt my hands basically because the thicker your yarn and the smaller needle the more tension and stress you're putting on your fingers and your wrists and your elbows and it's just not good for you so I did go up a couple of needle sizes I did not attempt to get gauge I'm very bad about checking gauge I tend to just run with things so this is a way out of scale for the pattern, but it did turn out okay. He's got his feet with his talons, and he's got his tail feathers here, and they designed it so that he will stand up uh, without you having to hold him. So that's pretty cool. I really enjoyed the feathers, the way they did the feathers. This looks like his wing is kind of folded down, and it's got this nice ripple effect, and it's got the ripple effect the whole way down, and that's on both. It gives you a couple variations about how you can attach your wings. My son wanted his wings to kind of flap a little when he's running with him. And then his poor, poor head would have been completely fine if I had uh, used some knitting knowledge and some math when I was doing it. So the head was about this tall before you started folding in to make this little V shape here. And the problem was that I used yarn that was so thick that it was very dense of a fabric and wasn't very pliable. So if I had used the correct yarn, it would have been more pliable and it would have, the face would have looked a little cute. This one looks like maybe uh, he's kind of banged himself up into some doorways and windows and stuff. But my seven year old is pretty awesome. He's used to being a guinea pig and he loves it. And I'm pretty proud of it myself too. It's the first full size stuffed animal that looks decently like what it's supposed to look like. Because that is not my area of expertise. Now this chair is a little funky, so it's hard to find a spot for him to stand. But if I were on a flat table or something and I just put him down, he would stand. As long as you make sure that his feet are in front and his tails are in the back. He has four tail feathers. So that's my first finished object. I think I only have two. I have two finished objects and one half object. So the next finished object. So this was, I was working on these Desert Vista Dye Works uh, summer movie bingo socks. And basically you have different colors for different themes. So there's uh, fire, ice cream, picnic, parade, yellow is a free space. This blue up here is, I think it's called go to the sea. I use that for both of my cups. And then this, I did an afterthought heel. So um, I knit the whole sock as a tube 
and then went back and did the afterthought heel, did a cut in the curvy, wervy afterthought heel tutorial. And this colorway, it's going to be kind of hard for me to show here, so let's see. It is called The Mountains Are Calling, and it kind of reminded me of The Sound of Music because it takes place um, in the mountains during Nazi Germany, but it wasn't in Germany. I think it was in Switzerland. Um, I could be totally wrong, but I know it's something like that and that they, there was a family, they had a nanny who came in and she ended up falling in love with the dad and teaching the kids music. And one of the songs is, um, sugar. <laughs> I totally lost it. Anyways, there is a song that references about the mountains calling. So, um, that's what that reminded me of. That's what I did both my heels in. So my heels on each will match and my cuffs on each will match. I put this little sunglasses progress keeper that Desert Vista Dye Works had sent with the kit. And that's where I was where I last podcasted. I last podcasted about a month ago. I finished this probably that night because I was like so pumped up to show you how much I could do. And I have also finished the second sock. So once again, the cuff is made out of go to see. These are various colorways. Um, and actually this one, I believe is all about sharks. So I started this you can knit based on what you're doing or what movies you're watching. And so when I started this sock, I was watching Jaws 1, 2, and 3. And so some of these colorways are skinny dipping, sharks, something else based on that. Um, and then we got back to, this was the 4th of July, so I wanted to do a big chunk for the 4th of July. Um, it wasn't called the 4th of July, I can't remember what the colorway was called. But it certainly, from here to here, reminded me of 4th of July, and that's about the time frame I was knitting it, so I knit that pretty pretty long. Oh, maybe I finished? No, this was the second sock. Huh. And then, uh, once again, I knitted it as a tube. I did the toe in free space as well, and so this is why knitters take notes. See, I'm always good at showing you how to do something or how to improve based on past performance and how to follow other people's suggestions and listen to the experts. So everyone says, oh, I have my knitting notes or I have my notes on my project. And you would usually write how many rows until the heel or how many rounds you did in your afterthought heel before you started decreasing, um, how many stitches get, did you get to before you started only doing decrease instead of decrease and then knit one. So if you can, you can definitely tell. So this one has definitely got that rounded toe, which kind of to me looks like it's coming up to like a, like one of those, I think it was called a rhombus trapezoid, something of that nature from here up. And this one looks like a rounded toe, like in that is round but it's not the same amount of stitches. Um, I don't know how I messed up. I did it from memory of how many, like where to start decreasing for the toe and how many rounds to do before I did just straight decreasing and how many stitches to go on each needle before I did the Kitchener stitch. And they're not the same. They both fit comfortably. Um, this one has more room, so this one might stretch as I wear it. This one will be traditionally what a sock is for me, which doesn't stretch very much. Um, so learning moments. I have tons of them because I didn't take notes. Um, and people do notes differently. They could, you can write it on, you know, like, say this was your pattern paper. You could write it on your pattern paper. You can write it in your phone. You can write it on Ravelry. There's a new app. Of course, because I'm on a spot, I'm not going to remember it. Um, I'll try to remember to put like a little picture of it. So it's coming out, it's free, but you also can have different um, like packages that have different costs associated with it. And it stores your, your projects and you can highlight them and you can 
move to where your rows are. Oh, that cat in the back is Callie. She doesn't usually show up, so that was kind of cool. Um, she came to us two, two years ago. I think it was two years. Maybe it's just one. I'm a terrible mom at like cat birthdays because I'm like, yep, they're good. And then like the vet asked me and I always give an estimate because if they weren't born in my house, I'm really terrible at it. So I apologize if that offends you. It's just how my brain works. It's not because I don't care. Um, but I believe she's two years old. So my aunt had taken in a cat that was very, very pregnant. The cat looked like it had been astray for a while. Um, and the cat gave birth to, I think it was seven or eight, and they were all different. Like, um, I know all cats are different, but I mean, like, none of them had the same colorations, none of them had the same markings, none of them, they looked like they all came from different litters, basically. So that's Callie, my mom has her sister, Millie, and they are both, um, unique cats. So Millie just always is trying to do things that don't make sense and fit into things that don't make sense and scare people. And um, she's just like very entertaining. She probably does it to entertain us because there's Kelly again. Um, I hear that cats, you know, kind of think that they need to teach us things. Like when they're bringing you something that they caught, they want praise, but they're also, I guess, trying to teach you to hunt. So maybe Millie has a purpose and we just think she's funny. Callie, on the other hand, acts like a dog. She will fetch sticks. She will fetch socks. She will fetch anything if you ask her to. Doesn't always bring it back, but she will go and retrieve it. Um, she comes up to you and like head bumps your hand or anything that she can reach to, to be pet. And um, like so when we go for walks, so we'll go for a walk down in the field, which is quite a ways. She'll walk the whole way with us <laughs> and then follow us back. So. Um, we call her our cat dog. So she's, she's pretty cute. She's pretty, pretty beautiful colors. Um, she's a calico. She reminds me of a cat we had when we were growing up named Miss Emily, who was mine and my sister's favorite cat. Um, unfortunately she had a sad demise. So that was a little, little trauma there for a bit. Um, and when I saw her in the litter, I was like, Oh, she looks like Miss Emily. We're going to have her. Um, and my aunt had named her Callie. So we kept the name. All right. Back to knitting. <laughs> so these are my socks. They are not identical and they were not meant to be. Um, and actually one looks longer than the other, which could also be part of the toe thing. Um, so take notes, take notes, take notes. Especially like, I don't know, you'll probably hear the second sock syndrome and that's when you, you knit one whole sock and like you're dreading the second sock or you're just not feeling it anymore or, which is even worse, you start the sock and then it just never goes anywhere. It becomes one of those languishing whips and it just hangs out and you're like, oh, or you're like, oh shoot, I don't remember how many rows. Like it can be stressful. So um, take notes. There's that one. And then my half object, is it in this bag? This is my oops, summer sock camp pin by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady for her summer sock camp, which I participated in. I knit, I wanted to knit one sock in every cabin, but I ended up doing um, one in nine inch and one in double point needles or DPM. Okay, so this is a vanilla sock and it's meant to be a shorty. And I had when I was younger, I used to think that orange and blue went really well together, and some people think that they don't, and I remember me and my mom always kind of teasing each other, like, it would drive her crazy when I'd put blue and orange together, because they don't go together. So, I love them, and I had some extra yarn laying around that was orange and blue, so I decided I would do my cuff with blue and orange, and I did three rounds of each, so three of blue, three of orange, and so on for 15 rows. So that'll give three, three blue rows, two orange rows, and then you would start the sock in orange. And the sock is knit in a tube and it's in this, I think it's called Clownfish. I got it in Maryland Sheep and Wool Fest. Oh, there we go. Quite a while ago. 
um, and I can't remember the dyer because I didn't keep the tag. And then this blue is leftover from You Blew My Mind sock set that I had made. It was the mini to go for socks and, or <laughs> to go for heels and toes. So I did it for heels and toes here. So that's one sock and I have stolen or copycatted Okay, the crazy sock lady she does a marker every 10 rows so that it's easier to count when she goes to do the next sock so I did that um, and it's vanilla as in this is knit to knit to purl to and then this is just knit and then I started the second sock and I started it on nine inch circulars which is what this was knitted and I've got the whole ribbing, so I've got the three blue and the two orange, and I have started the orange stockinette straight stitch. Or just knit, knit, knit. And this is what the ball looks like. And it's kind of cool, I never noticed it before, but some of the areas where it gets a little darker look bluish in nature in the sock and I don't know if it's this blue is bringing it out more because I never noticed it like that before so that's been kind of fun so that's my half object so one piece is done one piece is waiting and whips oh my gosh so many whips even though I feel like I'm not knitting at all let's see where shall we begin so this I've always promised to show and I've never brought it out so this is my Cozy Memories. It is a blanket made out of stock yarn and it's made with one square at a time, also known as a mitered square. Got a little decrease in the middle there. So let's see if I can show you. So this is, let's see, where, okay. So this is the main body of it. And then it starts to tail off a little bit into different segments because I look at a color and I try to think what would it look good next to or I have too many green legs in this one or too many blues in this row I need to move it around so that's why some of them are a little different so it's pretty big um, it could be a child's blanket like a, a younger child's blanket if I had if I fill it out, like right here, if I fill out the gaps so that it makes a rectangle, it could be a child's blanket. But I really want it to be a really nice lap blanket for watching TV. And I want to, usually what happens is we'll be watching TV and I'll have a blanket on. And then one little will climb in, grab a little bit of the blanket, and another little will climb in and we'll shift it. So I'm thinking it needs to be fairly big so that we can share it because it's probably going to go on the back of the couch. So there's the whip going to be whip for a long time and my dotted ray shawl whoops that you're probably sick of hearing about because I talk about it every time I just lost oh only one stitch that's not bad I think it's hard to tell in his shawls because um this one's got a lot of like lace where you yarn over and if you skip a few with a like the needle pulls out and you're not looking it's hard to know what exactly was your stitch so when i get back to it i will probably be a little confused and it'll take a little bit to figure out but um i have not made much progress on it i started my blood orange margarita colorway i've already showed that to you and i did not put a marker in so do I have one here if I have one here I'll put it in so that I can say this is where I was the last time I showed you I've been really bad about taking care of my stuff I've been like throwing them in random places and then I'll find them when I don't need them and I'll be like oh that can stay there and then when I need them I'm like hmm where did I last see it okay here's it's not the ones I wanted but it will work We'll use one of these so we'll use I'm using a blue one for where you start the row turns so we'll use a yellow one and we'll put it right here 
right here. Ah. Yarn's a little slippery today. Okay. Marker placed. So we'll see if I make any progress by next podcast. And then, so my sister-in-law is having a baby. I'm very excited. This will be their first. And I want to make literally all the baby things. Like I see baby sweater, want to make it. I see baby pants, want to make it. Baby hats, want to make it. Everything, everything. And I can't knit fast enough and I don't want to start a hundred projects yet. So I'm trying to tell myself, you have till February. We'll see. <laughs> so I did start a baby blanket though. And let's see if I can, yeah, that's a good, accurate representation of what it looks like. So this is called, um, is it wave light or light, light waves? Wave of light blankets, free on Ravelry. I um, clicked the link on Ravelry and then it had me go to like that personal webpage and it had the whole pattern there. And I never wrote down the lady's name. Um, and I took a picture because it's a four row repeat of the four row repeat. So I haven't had to go back. So I apologize. Um, I will do my best to go back and look and find the creator because it's, it's simple and it's really pretty and I'm doing it in pastel colors because we don't know the gender yet. We will know, um, they're having a gender reveal in a couple weeks actually. So they, I guess have a big target and they're going to fill it with either blue powder or pink powder and the dad is going to shoot at the target while we're all watching and then it'll be like a puff of a cloud or obviously a puff of a cloud <laughs> uh, a cloud of color and it'll either be pink, pink or blue um, so I'm pretty excited about that and um, she keeps asking me what are you making what are you making for the baby and I'm like does she, does she want something specific? I'm like, I want to make you everything. And I kind of want things to be a surprise, but I also kind of want to tell her everything. So I haven't figured out that yet. But we'll figure it out. We've got time. So there's that. I feel like there's something else. Baby blanket, dotted ray, cozy memories. I think that's it. In terms of pattern envy, I want to knit everything baby. I have knit in the past a couple of um, baby pants and like a baby jacket that has like um, ears to make it look like a little bear, which is cute. And excuse me, I enjoyed making those. So I might make those again for this one. Um, or I might do something different. I don't know. I don't want to go... I want to be able to knit a lot of things, so I don't want to get something that's too complicated or too patterned, but um, if there's something that her or her husband choose that they want me to knit, I will certainly knit that regardless of how crazy it is because that's just how I am. Um, but that's what's got my eye right now. It's all the baby things and um, there is a lot of like talk about fall so it has been getting a little cooler at night it's actually starting in the afternoon so fall might hit quicker than normal and I'm a huge fall lover so I'm okay with that I am feeling like we didn't have much of a summer so I'd like a little bit longer um, but also every time I feel that cool fall breeze I'm like pumpkins and apple picking and apple pie and apple cider and cocoa <laughs> and uh, you know cozy sweaters so there are some cows or knit alongs starting very soon and I'll give you more info the next time I'm on here um, because I wrote my notes a few weeks ago when I was going to podcast and have not updated them. But uh, a lot of people are getting that fall fever and are wanting to start knitting their sweaters and hats and things. I think most of them are knitting sweaters or cardigans. So um, that's on my to-do list knitting-wise to figure out what sweater I'm going to knit for fall. 
um, and maybe start the star blanket which is a pattern by Stephen West and it's shawl like but it actually turns into this huge blanket um, that has a star as the main shape for it and then it kind of trails off and it's really really gorgeous and stars are pretty much my favorite shape so we'll see um, hmm I think that's it knitting wise in terms of life my youngest turned seven which was pretty cool he had this like dragon and lizard party and it turned out that it was on the day of um, national or world lizard day so that was kind of cool he did get a bearded dragon like he's been wanting um, so like mine different colors it's a leather back so the back is smooth instead of spiky and um, it's a red orange morph I think they call it so he's got some really cool markings but then he looks kind of like tigerty leopardish underneath like on his underbelly so he's really unique um, and I start a new job at home health so I'm super excited I've always wanted to do I really want to be a hospice nurse um, which helps take care of people when um, they're getting ready to pass away even like when death isn't imminent like you know, helping them ease into that journey. Um, but that was full, so the other side of the building is home health, and I got a job there, and I think that will be good for me. Um, I think it's gonna tick a lot of, check a lot of boxes off my list of things that I'm looking for in a job, and it will give me a nice little break from the nursing home. I've been in a nursing home since 2006, so uh, change is desperately overdue. Um, let's see. We've been having lots of bonfires, lots of swimming. My youngest is learning how to swim and is doing an amazing job. And I think that's about it. So, oh, actually, there is one thing exciting. So we are having a big talent show. So all the, the kids and the um, cousins are doing different acts in a talent show at my mom's house for our last bonfire of the year and there'll be of course s'mores and things but there'll be some judges that my mom has lined up that will be impartial and there's been a jug that we've been putting money in and so whoever is the winner of the talent show will get this um, jug of money now the jug's not full but it's still like money wise I think it's getting close to two hundred dollars so um, that's been keeping the kids pretty excited. We go back to school in September and um, it's a little different this year. They've got it so that it's kind of staggered bus wise, it's staggered schedule wise. They go certain days so that they don't have all the kids there at once. So we'll see how that goes. I'm a little nervous, but also kind of excited because, you know, they haven't had traditional school since March and they have seen their like super exclusive best friends only but they haven't seen like their friends um, so I think it will be good and also I think it will be good to get out of the house and do something that's not just with mom or dad so I believe that's all uh, if you would like I would love it if you would uh, like and follow um, maybe even subscribe my channel and if you want, you can leave a comment down below. I'm kind of curious, what are your plans? How do you celebrate the transition from end of summer to beginning of school, even if it's not traditional school? Like, how does your family tra transition? What are some things you do? Do you do special events? Do you do special day trips? Um, I'm curious. Thank you. Happy knitting.